Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to Back to From the Depths. I almost missed a word there. A turret caps tutorial. So to start off with, um, like a little disclaimer, I do not claim to be the world expert at making turret caps in From the Depths. But today I had a look at my guide to-do list and I thought, you know what? My turret cap seemed to do okay, so let's make the tutorial on it. This was requested absolutely ages ago by I don't even remember who it was that long ago, so it's about time I got my lazy self around to doing it. So, we're... I'm gonna try not to get uh, too much into specifics. Well, I am gonna do specifics, but I'm basically gonna... Uh, let you find people know what I've learned about making turret caps and just, you know, do's and don'ts and that kind of thing. So, to start off with, you'll notice that we've got a array of um, uh, little turrets right here. We've got a cram cannon, we've got two APS guns, and we've got a particle cannon. Because I am practicing my particle cannon skills so I can make a particle cannon tutorial at some point. No idea when that'll happen, please. Um, actually, do ask, because that, that'll force me to make up my mind. And we've got not one, but three marauders here, because we need something to blow up. So yeah, so uh, to start off with turret caps, um, overall, I would say that there's two broad directions you can go when designing a turret cap uh, for a turret. And that is, you can go with a small turret cap that is hard to hit, or you can go with a large one that's very well armored and can it's more likely to get hit, but uh, if it does get hit, it can just shrug it off. Now, either one works well. I have seen both actually work uh, quite well. And um, that's uh, like, I don't know, it depends on the situation and it depends on what you want to do. But to start off, with, we're going to talk about these ones because these are the small ones. Uh, this uh, arrangement right here is not perfect. I never claim to be a perfect animal. Um, but yeah, this is about as small a turret cap as you can make uh, while still uh, having full coverage over the um, actual firing piece uh, itself. So this is about um, three by three uh, by three uh, turret cap covering everything for the scram cannon. And yeah, so um, a few things about that. Firstly, if you're going to... Ah, firstly a definition. So, just to keep things uh, nice and clear, what I mean by a small turret cap is a turret cap that is, um, in terms of length and width, it is uh, smaller than the turret itself uh, below it. So that is what we're going to be running with for this video for what is a small turret cap. It's basically, it pokes up and is smaller um, than the turret, basically, yeah. Uh, as opposed to a large one, uh, which is the same size or bigger. We'll get to that in a hot minute. And uh, the thing with that is that if you're going to have a smaller one, it does need a neck because you can't just have um, you can't just have a, a small turret cap and then um, you know not have any kind of a turret neck on it. And this, by the way, this dark glass right here is uh, basically simulating where the deck armor is. And I always recommend. Uh, having deck armor that's at least two meters thick, simply because that's, I don't know, that is an extra layer of insurance, so to speak, in case you get one layer blown off, there's another one, so it's not immediately straight into your internals. And uh, you kind of need a neck for that, because um, if you don't have that, if you imagine for a hot second that uh, this gun barrel is like two meters straight down, the heck was that noise? I don't know. But, um, yeah, so uh, it basically means that you'll have the top of this turret here, so this bit, uh, actually exposed to like the open air and uh, above deck, and that is uh, no good. That is a deck gun, and uh, that's that's not working. So you do need a bit of a neck, and um, in this particular case, uh, the turret cap itself is the same width of this, as the neck, and the only real reason not to do this is because it looks a little bit funny, or at least I think it does. You've got that kind of weird gap thing. If you don't particularly care about aesthetics, uh, that shouldn't be a problem, but if you do, uh, what you can do is something like this. This is style-wise what we're doing now. You can kind of just do this, just to make it a little bit less obvious that it, this is in fact a square shape. So something like this. Uh, just with the three panels, and if you look at that, it kind of hides uh, the little exposed corners there. And that, I don't know, that could, it's something along those lines, that just have slopes uh, cover up 
uh, those exposed bits. Okay, so um, I should mention as well that um, the easiest weapon system, uh, for simplicity's sake, we are going to run with cram, APS, and particle cannons for this target cap thing because uh, missiles usually don't need to be put on uh, turrets. And if they do, they tend to be deck turrets because, like, there's not a huge amount of point uh, sticking a like uh, the missile system on a like um, a buried turret because, like, really, what's the point exactly? If you're gonna do that, you might as well not have a turret at all. And uh, with lasers, it's a similar thing. The bulk of the laser system isn't on a turret, so they tend to be um, two-axis. Uh, d uh, deck turrets, just 100% above deck, with just the laser transceivers poking up through the decks and all that jazz, but um, crams and APS and particle cannons, they, like, you need proper turret design for them, usually. And so, getting back to the cram cannon, uh, crams are perhaps the easiest thing to have a small turret cap with, which is ironic, because the whole point of cram cannons is that they're, you know, they're meant to be kind of the main guns of a battleship kind of thing, but it's because, um, the max of the minimum, absolute minimum amount of uh, cram you need above deck in the turret cap is just the firing piece and at least one barrel. That's just two blocks. Uh, as opposed to APS, which is at least one barrel, the firing piece, uh, at least one barrel, sorry, uh, the, ele the mantlet, the firing piece, and uh, the um, little, con and the connector that actually connects the firing piece, unless you are doing something. Uh, like this and being cheeky because you can do this and this is attached to this so you can get that down to just three but still that is um, more blocks above deck uh, than the cram and over here uh, on the particle cannon it's pretty much the same uh, if you're using a short range lens or a melee uh, particle cannon lens which is a weird thing to put on a turret actually but never mind um, the uh, absolute minimum you can have in the turret cap itself is two. You've got uh, the corner, and you've got the lens, and yeah, that's that's as small as you can get. So it is a little bit easier, like it's not a game-breaking level of easy, uh, to have um, the uh, uh, to have small turret caps with particle cannons and crams uh, than it is for APS, but that's not a huge biggie. So yeah. Uh, these small turret caps, so uh, at this, like, basically this size or smaller, it's great for things, well, it's small, it doesn't require much uh, deck space, and in particular, if it's uh, not a particularly uh, big turret underneath, it means you can stick these things uh, really close together. So if I so wanted, maybe I want an unarmored uh, 3x3 thing, just because, like, I might not care if it gets blown up, I just want lots of Daka, and I can just stick them very close together. And uh, that, can, that can work, because um, it means that the turrets aren't occupying much space, they can rub up against each other quite nicely, and also the turret caps uh, can be quite close together, so handy uh, for small turret caps like that. Um, I should mention it is not a good idea to make the turret cap completely unarmored. I have seen that done in the odd tournament, um, but that's usually like a real uh, meta build that is designed uh, specifically for whatever rule set is... Um, uh, in play in the tournament. So this for instance, I do remember seeing um, uh, Those of you here's a channel shout out uh, those of you who know Menti who has run many uh, from the depths tournaments in the past I think it was one of this uh, one of his uh, battleship brawl tournaments I don't remember which one in which basically uh, there was uh, quite a successful design in it whose turrets relied like completely to the extreme of small turret caps is basically uh, the firing piece and just a few motor barrels, like, and that's it. That's That was the top of it, which meant um, they could have lots of them and not occupy much deck space. And also, like, they were very small and very hard to hit. So that turned out to be a winning combination, but um, that was a cram-only tournament, and back in the days when crams uh, miss a lot more than they do now. So um, there were no lasers, there were no APS, there were no bombs falling on the deck, there were no... Uh, random kinds of hit scan damage that's gonna hit you no matter what so uh, I would advise against this uh, if you are very very sure uh, that uh, the turret is not actually gonna be at risk so something like if it's on a 
a very fast flyer, for instance, or maybe like a very uh, deep diving submarine or something like that, that's when you could get away with a completely unarmored turret cap. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it for the small ones. There's, that's, uh, there's not much more to say about them. It's just like you just make them small, make them hard to hit, and you can even do uh, wacky things if they're small. Um, you can do things like uh, build a roof on top of them. So you can do something like this. Just um, actually, so something like let's make this out of metal. So like this, like this. You can actually hide the thing uh, underneath superstructure. Because now, it uh, for this turret, it matters considerably less that it's only got one uh, metal block between uh, the firing piece and the big scary outside world, because it's now got a hat, which is very convenient. And that's a lot easier to do with a small turret cap than a big one. Not impossible, uh, but just easier. And so I should mention some differences here and there. Um, with APS, um, you preferably, if you want to keep uh, the thing as safe and secure as possible, you want to uh, cover the mantlet, because mantlets, uh, especially with the last uh, mini-update, uh, not mini-update, it was quite a big update, oh, here in the lovely land of beta test, uh, mantlets are pretty darn tough, like, uh, especially the Omni-mantlet, it's ridiculous, it's uh, over 13,000 health and 40 armor, and even the small ones, that's like 1,000 health and 40 armor, that's, um... And not to be sneezed at, that is, uh, let's see here, that puts it um, in the same kind of health category as, um, let's see here, what's something, as like a three meter metal pole and getting close to like a, you know, it's basically a, as strong as the metal you'd usually surround it with, but best to just cover it up, just to be safe, just to give it a little bit of extra survivability, and uh, yeah. And keep it safe. And also, like, this particular uh, mantlet right here is, um, it's kind of plugged. So you've got the deck below it right there, which is kind of covering that base uh, from below to the sides. It's got metal blocks, just for that little, little bit of extra protection. And above, it's got a slope and, like, all around it, a slope. Uh, that does help, especially, like, when it comes to things that, um, you know, secondary weapons like flat guns and timed frag and stuff like that. It's just that little bit extra to stop the gun uh, being um, disabled immediately. And uh, if you really want to chance it and um, just rely on the mantlet uh, to keep things safe, because, you know, that is kind of what a mantlet is for, in practice, you want to cover these as much as possible. And in this particular case, um, the barrel is blocking um, uh, the hitbox here, and it's really just this block here, right on top, that is exposed. So hopefully uh, that works well. And also with uh, particle cannons, it's usually a good idea to set uh, back uh, the lens a little bit inside a turret. Uh, which you can't actually do in a turret uh, cap this small, so you better be uh, pretty darn sure uh, of your case if you're going to have a small pack lens right here. Also, I should mention that... Um, these little things are just uh, two blocks above the deck. Uh, usually, uh, especially if you notice uh, the barrels here on the APS and the cram, I usually like to have it like three meters above deck, because that means... Um, right... let's actually go over here... Well, just uh, for APS especially, because it just means you can have um, blocks on the turret uh, below the mantlet itself, which I tend to... which I think is a little bit better for survivability, because... Um, it means if the deck is blown away, uh, the uh, the chin, if you want to call it, of the gun isn't left exposed. So yeah, that's small turrets. Uh, that's one way to uh, have your guns be survivable. And we're going to just uh, spawn in the next thing, like so. And uh, we're also going to spawn in a few more marauders, because um, that is hilarious to me. Also, explosions are fun. So yeah, these are an example of uh, kind of the other strategy. And of course, these are like with From the Depths, it's always guidelines. Uh, never, It's never truly like uh, you always must do this or else. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is the second main strategy. It's just you have a big lump of a turret uh, that is quite difficult to destroy. And this is... Um, with uh, small turrets, it tends to be the case for secondary guns, so things that uh, are not going to be 
the main damage dealers on your craft, they're there for just a secondary roll, like anti-air, or putting uh, smoke shells on the target, or just uh, being annoying, or being cool, or whatever. Uh, your main guns are what's going to be doing most of the damage, so you want to keep them as safe as possible. And since they tend to be larger anyway, you're probably going to, like, uh, it's worth investing in a properly uh, tanky turret cap. I should mention as well that um, uh, the APS guns on here are a little bigger, because uh, if you have a tiny little uh, noodle sticking out of such a big turret cap, that kind of looks weird and it bugs me. So, slightly bigger, so these aren't exactly the same guns, even though uh, the turret underneath is exactly the same size. So, uh, first things first with these uh, big turrets. Uh, since they can be bigger, uh, it's, they're much easier to do necklace. So what I mean by that is like, um, uh, you have the turret here and you'll notice that there's no real neck to it. It's just the turret and it's straight up into the turret cap. I only learned how to do this uh, relatively recently and I have to say this is a game changer. This really is. Because in the same space for here, if you had a 2 meter neck, uh, you would have considerably less room uh, for um, the inner workings of the turret. So it basically means the whole turret is shorter, it's more squat, it's more compact. So necklace is actually a really good idea and it's actually pretty darn durable uh, if you do the turret cap right. And on that note, um, this turret cap is like multiple layers of metal. But it also has heavy armor in it. So, if you really want to go cuckoo crazy and you have the budget for it, um, you can just make the whole turret cap out of heavy armor and, like, Bob's your uncle, that's it. Uh, that does lack redundancy, though. Uh, the same kind of redundancy that just multiple layers of metal does. So, this is what I've chosen to do here. So, you see, this is, this is completely solid, which perhaps is overkill, but... Um, it does mean that um, there's a lot of blocks to chew through before anything uh, truly valuable gets destroyed on this particular kind of turret cap. And in particular, so let's... Um, I actually uh, tested this uh, earlier, so... The uh, damage of a fully crammed 2,000mm cram shell uh, with... Um, that doesn't have any extra... Uh, what the hell is the thing called? It's been ages since the... Um, Payload compactors, that's it. It's been ages since the crime update, I never remember that. So, if we turn these off for a hot second, uh, you'll see this is a 16,000 uh, power explosion. Let's see how long it takes for a firing piece uh, to get destroyed. So, first shot, nothing. And uh, can you stop moving for a hot second? Uh, first shot, second shot, third shot, fourth shot, fifth shot. Sixth shot, seventh shot, eighth shot, there the heavy armor fell off, ninth shot, and tenth shot, eleventh shot, twelfth shot, and there the barrel's finally severed, uh, the um, gun itself is still healthy, I think, what was it, thirteenth shot, and now you see the turret actually below it is starting to take damage, so... This, I reckon, is a good sign. If the turret um, cap is outlasting the actual turret itself, when this should be a snug below deck, uh, you're probably doing things right. Also, uh, if you're really paranoid about, um, about uh, keeping your turret safe, uh, you can armor the front of them uh, more heavily than the back. So you can do uh, something like... What's that? It's two meters... You can do something like this, especially if you're like me and you like using slopes on these. So you can do something like that because uh, the front of the turret, and I'll actually come up with a... I'll show an example to you right now of a faction craft that does that. Let's go here, and the ship, godly. Hello the tier. Uh, that's, uh, I just spawned it in on the wrong faction. Uh, don't mind me, technical difficulties, player tier. And let's go hang out in tier. And control O, I want this fella. And we'll stick you right. Here. So this is an example of a main gun with a massive neck 
uh, because it's a super firing gun and needs to poke over its friends. Let's stick it on a wooden pole, uh, because that's hilarious to me. So here's an example of uh, what I mean. So um, if you are actually uh, severely worried about the durability of your uh, turret, you can armor the front uh, more than the back, because if the turret is getting shot in the back of the head, uh, something's probably gone horribly wrong anyway. Uh, it probably means the turret is either offline or your ship is surrounded, in which case, shame on you, why did you let that happen? So yeah, just a quick uh, note there that probably isn't that freaking uh, quick after all, since I had to spawn in the tier twice. Okay, so, um, uh, handy thing with uh, these big turret caps and is like, uh, Having more blocks to play with means you can stack armor a little bit better. Now, stacking armor uh, does not work as well as it used to because it only stacks up to uh, two layers. So, um, uh, it's like it only, I don't know, this metal block on the top here is only getting like an eight, uh, plus eight armor bonus from the block below it. And I can demonstrate that. Where is my block HP thing? So here it goes. It's AC of 48 over there, which is still a fair amount. That's still a plenty. It also means that in this particular case, the barrel outside um, outlasts the metal around it, which is great. There's no point having a big armored turret cap um, when the barrel gets shorn off immediately. Anyway, that's a problem. And it's also why the devs have been repeatedly um, buffing um, the durability of gun barrels, like repeatedly throughout the, uh, the development process, so that's uh, pretty nice. And um, you'll also notice that um, with uh, these large turret caps, in particular with a necklace design, uh, you can get clever with uh, where the firing piece actually pokes up. Uh, this is actually at the back of the turret, this um, uh, gauge snake or connector snake is uh, poking up through here, and the turret, uh, or the firing piece rather, is way here in the back, so it's got Multiple advantages of this. Firstly, it's further back from the action, which means um, there's a little bit of extra uh, turret cap length in between it and impending doom. It also means you can hide uh, more of the gun barrel inside the turret cap. That is very handy. So there's kind of bulb up a uh, firing piece placement. Uh, super good idea, actually. Like, it helps a lot. And, uh, yeah, so... Just hiding it further, you can hide it further back inside, just lay it behind protection. And um, moving over to APS, it also makes uh, using large mantlets much easier. Now, if you really want to uh, keep it compact uh, as well as um, as well as tanky, and want to just um, uh, not make the thing any taller than you need it to, then yeah, sticking with uh, these one uh, one by one by one uh, turrets works just fine. Elevation mantlet actually is pretty. It's not bad, at the very least, like, if you've got main uh, cannons uh, on a battleship or something, like, uh, 30 degrees of uh, elevation um, is actually usually enough, really. But uh, if you uh, want to go, uh, like, uh, stick a bigger mantlet in there, well, that's um, a bigger turret cap is pretty much exactly what you need for that. And um, the heavy armor placement is probably uh, worth uh, talking about because, um, I always say, actually, I was I was almost touched on this earlier. Uh, I always say with heavy armor is that it's more effective uh, the less of it you use. So it's like really critical key areas that you can just hide um, the um, heavy armor and just it just acts as that last layer of defense. And uh, this particular uh, all the uh, stuff that is above the uh, turret well itself, I guess you could call it is um, surrounded by heavy armor. So if you go, say, here on the firing piece, uh, to the left, heavy armor, to the right, heavy armor, above, and below, heavy armor, same thing with the mantlet. Uh, there's heavy armor up there, there's heavy armor there, there's heavy armor there, on all four sides, and it's got heavy barrels uh, in front of it. By the way, if you're going to use heavy armor, or just this amount of metal, uh, around uh, in your big armored turret cap, uh, heavy barrels are pretty much compulsory simply because they are so much tougher than regular barrels. So you go here, this is the one by barrel. They're not exactly flimsy. Uh, they used to be uh, a little bit uh, delicate, but not anymore. Health of 800, armor 35, nothing to be sneezed at. But uh, heavy barrel is um, 1000 uh, health and 50 armor, and uh, that scales up uh, with the length. So 
uh, 3,200 health uh, for the regular barrel, uh, 4,000 health for the heavy barrel. So that doesn't seem like a hell of a lot, but that extra 25 uh, armor... Is that 25 armor? No, it's extra 15 armor. Uh, that helps. Uh, that helps a lot. Let's see here. Wait a minute. Two meters there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muzzle brakes. All have the same armor. So, yeah. I believe that's it, really. Uh, where's that? Where's that? We haven't been shooting at a marauder, and that's bad. Okay, so that's basically... Oh, yeah. F f little note on the particle cannon here. You'll notice that um, this actually has more heavy armor uh, in it than all the other ones. And there's two reasons for that. Firstly, this kind of a flared mouth of the thing, and actually, there's a handy uh, another Steel Striders thing I can spawn in. Uh, I hate this thing. Where are you? Godly, Godly, Kitakami, there you are. God, I hate this thing. It is so annoying. It's like... I know, it's like, it's like, it's like an itchy bum. Like, unexpected, and yet here it is. Very pretty, though. So you'll notice... On the Kitakami, and this is kind of where I got the idea for this, is this this kind of a flared uh, opening right here. And the reason for that is that particle cannons uh, don't have a barrel that uh, clips through blocks. So, um, like, in order to elevate and um, depress and, you know, have good azimuth fire, they kind of need clearance for that. So, having a big hole um, actually helps them... Uh, aim their shots, thus in a wider uh, area. They have a wider field of fire. However, you do not want to stick uh, the lens right uh, in the middle of that big hole because then it gets uh, blown to pieces. So you set it back a little bit. So you've got this kind of, I don't know, like almost w a wacky trombone or concave rather. That's more scientific. Trombone. Eh, I'm going to call it the trombone. And so you make the uh, pack trombone. And uh, that actually works quite well, like, um, in my, um, when finding the Kitakami, I've noticed that the Particle Cannon survives actually pretty darn well, even when being absolutely deluged in missiles and, like, explosive shells from APS and, cra and even cram shots and stuff like that. So, yeah, this uh, works really well, and if you go here, you'll see that uh, the lens itself actually has some heavy armor. Uh, just surrounding it, so that's super convenient. In fact, it's set back a little bit, so it's not even surrounded by heavy armor. It's got heavy armor in front of it. It's not a full wrap around, so this turret uh, does get um, uh, nailed from the sides, and which I'm happy to say, um, my turret over here uh, would not have that problem because this is full, uh, fully surrounded by heavy armor. So yeah, you need this kind of a uh, flare in order to give yourself enough um, firing range. And I probably could tweak the slopes in here so they're more consistent. But yeah, that's um, it also looks kind of cool, really. And the other reason for that is because uh, particle cannons, if you're going to make a big uh, tanky turret for them, a heavy armor is a good idea because these things are vulnerable to EMP. So you see here, just looking at the short range lens, uh, the EMP susceptibility is 30%, and EMP damage reduction is 10%. So, if a 1000 power EMP jolt uh, hits this, hits the firing piece, it takes 300 damage from that. So, 1000 isn't actually that much. Uh, so, if it gets nailed by a big EMP missile, that can actually spell doom for your uh, particle accelerator cannon. And the heavy armor, because it uh, just kind of it just soaks up that damage first. It means that you lose the armor before you lose the weapon. And that is the order you want to lose things because it means it just buys the weapon time uh, in order to blow things up. And uh, if you blow things up more and have more time to blow things up, uh, it'll probably um, have a greater chance of um, not blowing you up straight back. So that's a good idea. So that's that. That's why that is there. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it, um, all I can really say about, uh, the large turrets. You can see this is, um, the glass here is once again saying where the deck is, and it does kind of... Oh, yeah, so if you want to be sure that, uh, you don't have that annoying gap, you can use a ring like this, and basically, uh, you need at least one block away, um, you need a block covering this uh, part here, so, uh, the edges of the square, the corners of the square, if you have the turret cap covering that, you're probably golden, and it will be covered 
and uh, this big turret cap can act as a lovely umbrella for the turret uh, below it. And now, just for giggles, I will show you a variant on the large armored turret cap, and we will finish off uh, the video by blowing up way too many marauders. So, let's turn that off because I'm the only one. I am the one who uh, knocks with high explosive shells. So, let's go here and pancake caps. So, I believe last video. Uh, I have said that uh, like I'm really fond of round turrets. They are totally my jam now, and uh, this is an it is a similar spin on uh, the uh, kind of large um, just turret cap kind of thing, uh, but with a slight difference. So you would notice that uh, the uh, large turret caps I showed you uh, just now they're pretty much completely solid. Now that's both a good thing and a bad thing. It means more blocks uh, to kind of uh, sit between uh, your uh, delicate turret bits and uh, the dangerous outside world, but it also means uh, that shaped charge shells, so heat shells, um, can just penetrate all the way through and ruin your day and like the armor has not done its job properly and that sucks. Uh, if you do something like this and um, it's like it's not like restricted to these kind of uh, pancake turrets, I just, I find that uh, when I build these, it's like, kind of easier to do, is that uh, what you have is a mostly hollow turret cap. So it's big, so it's acting like a kind of umbrella for the turret below it, and it's like, um, it's still pretty tough, because there is two layers of metal, like, pretty much all the way around, but there's air gaps in it, which um, reduces the angles. It does not uh, eliminate the possibility completely of shape charges ruining your day, but it does mean that on the sides at least, so basically around this whole arc here on the sides, uh, you have this air gap uh, which stops heat um, from punching through and being a problem. Now, if you are worried about hash, what you can do is that you can just fill this uh, with applique panels, which count as an air gap, but they also uh, provide a little bit of armor protection. So I've done this... Um, like on a number of turret caps, and it actually works pretty darn well because um, it's it's like building a hull. Uh, the kind of hulls that tend to be very durable are either, in fact, I will just like I'm sorry, like we never get through the marauders fast enough, so we're going to spawn in two differing uh, design philosophies for uh, for armor. So if I go here. And if I go here here, let's spawn on our friend the Bulwark, probably a bit big, and uh, Steel Striders, let's go with the tier again, because that's hilarious, uh, let's see, there we go, did they spawn inside each other? Where is the tier? Hello, where's the tier? No, I didn't spawn in the tier. Not yet, anyway. Now I have. All right, now you two gentlemen, or gentle ladies, uh, stop moving for a hot second. All right, so um, the first uh, turret caps I showed you, I'm kind of fitting with the tier, is like, it's kind of compact and multi-layered is the idea behind the protection, because it's just lots of blocks. So one, two, three, four layers of uh, stuff. In this case, it is uh, layers of uh, alloy in order to make things buoyant, and a layer of metal for toughness, and it's just thick, and compact and just very dense and that is one perfectly valid way of making your craft uh, super tough or you can use empty air as the bulwark does and the bulwark is rather infamous for taking a long time to destroy not because its armor is particularly thick because well it isn't um, it's a little bit thicker than I remember actually so um, up here at the waterline you've got three layers of stuff and actually a layer of alloy that's a recent addition Ah, that is thicker than I remember. This is possibly not the best example. But the main reason that the bulwark is, uh, takes a while to blow out of the water is because of these huge compartments. A uh, funny thing about empty air, you can't exactly destroy it. Like, it's just kind of there, so... If an explosion that is powerful enough to blow through uh, three meters of metal uh, lands here, sure, it'll blow through this wall, but it can't reach across this gap. And uh, same with fragmentation. If a 
say a frag shell hits this and it rips through these three layers, uh, the fragments will disperse and not all hit the same block once they reach over there. So empty space is actually pretty darn good armor. So this is kind of the philosophy that these things are rolling with. Rather than a whole bunch of dense uh, blocks, like notwithstanding, I just filtered this with a bleak, um, it's basically empty air. So if we use our, let's see, let's go here and let's see, control Z that. Uh, this probably will take a similar amount of shots because once again, it's got that cunning heavy armor uh, core surrounding the barrel and the firing piece. But if we do this, you will see it blows straight through that, but that was, um, it didn't get very far. Like, um, I don't really think that it actually touched uh, the heavy armor, because just it was just distant enough to not be a problem. Let's see, where's the... Nine. So, 93% health, so that did its job. It's basically ablative armor. And if I filled that with a pleek, um, that would probably work even better. You could even fill it with slopes if you like. So, yeah, that's, um, that's a handy thing to do. And it works still uh, with all that, and also means you have extra space in the turret for all kinds of wacky things. One thing that I have started to do, which I believe is hilarious and cool, let's see if I can actually manage it. That's, this is going to be hard in this particular turret cap, so I'm just going to do something like... Okay, I... Detection, I need a camera. Need a camera. What it does so you can do something like this. You can hide detection inside uh, the turret cap itself if you have extra space in here. And you might be thinking, borderwise, wait, why would you do this? That's a silly idea. This camera cannot see out. Oh, au contraire, combine that with my. Uh, obscene love of portholes and you've got a winner winner chicken dinner so and if you still want a slope in there what you do is you get glass and then you stick it right there and you've got a turret uh, with eyeballs and a long nose which is always a good thing so yeah and um this i find is actually works really well with um bearing range finders which um these things uh, because um, what I usually do is I stick an armored one on top like this uh, these things are pretty tough they're not that tough they only have 2700 health um, decent armor of 40 but uh, that's not a lot of health that's like two metal beams or less actually let's check that uh, quick math yeah less than um, uh, two metal beams so and this is a wide target this thing is nine meters across so what I tend to find works really well if you have a big enough turret cap that is mostly hollow uh, you can sink this thing down hide it inside the cap itself and then in order to make sure it sees out you just have this conga line of uh, metal portholes and it can see out and that's fantastic so that is a very good trick uh, assuming if you don't want to do that, what you can also do is just fill this with other things. So, in this particular case, maybe I could uh, do something like uh, this. Just a bunch of surge protectors, because by gum, I don't want my, um, I do not want my particle cannon being compromised in any way. Or you can do something which I... Um, I'm starting to learn it works really well with uh, tanks or anything else that you want to be super compact, and that is uh, stick um, extra weapons on it. So if you go here, and here, and here, this is slightly risky, but yes, and yes. Ta da! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. There's a gap there. That will not do. Let's fill the gap. So now uh, we've just got... Um, we have bonus turrets. So let's... Uh, you hide away. And you hide away. I want that away. And now... Let's see here. That's alright. And now, once again, lots of marauders. And this time, I swear, we'll kill all of them. Assuming the video doesn't... 
end before then. Let's see. That is not working. Interesting. Well, I tried. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is future Borderwise talking. I found out what I was doing wrong uh, with the missile controllers on the turret. Uh, the required accuracy was not set high enough, so the missiles uh, were not firing because they thought they weren't pointing towards the target enough. Uh, if you want your missiles to just uh, fire um, and arc towards the target like I was trying to do here, you just set the required accuracy higher and that fixes it. So, that's how you do it. Uh, back to you, past borderwise. You bloody idiot. But anyway, so uh, that's a few ideas on turret caps. I might edit out that missile misadventure. And now I'm saying that, I know I'm not going to. Future borderwise, uh, you're just gonna have to deal with that. Why did I forget to turn on god mode? But yeah, that's a basic turret cap uh, uh, tutorial, uh, notwithstanding my missile failure just now. So uh, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some ideas. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. And if you know why my missiles aren't firing, please let me know, because that is just embarrassing. You bloody idiot. Farewell.